In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how you can customize snow that you add to your video presentation, either by using it as an effect or using it as one of several overlays. We had a previous tutorial that showed you exactly how to add this effect, but what we're going to do now is show you how to customize it to fit your particular needs. Let's look at the effects first of all. We're going to go to the effects room and then I'm going to search for snow. Press enter and I'm going to use my regular snow. I'll simply drop it on the video track. I could put it on a separate effect track. Now when I play this, this is what I'm going to see. What if I want to modify this slightly? What can I do to change that if I don't exactly like the way it's coming down? So what I need to do is play the stop and then I'm going to click on the little green box in the lower left corner called Effect and Snow and we'll modify it. That gets me into my Edit Options here. Let's widen it a bit. Here are the options that we have on this particular effect. You can change the wind. If we move it a little bit to the right, let's watch what happens. Now it's moving to the right. If I move it to the left, now you can change the largest size. If these are too big, I can shrink them down. And you notice they got smaller. You also have the smallest size. You can grow that or reduce that. You can increase the number by changing the density. If I want a lighter snow, I'll click it back here. If I want something more intense, I can move it up all the way to 200. And then we have a 3D depth. This in increases or decreases the intensity of the effect. We'll move it back just a little bit once we stop this and play it again. Now the other one is very interesting below that. The other tool here is called your effect mask. And one of the tools I like is this one here, Auto Object Selection. It will select the element in the center. I'm going to click on that. And now if I play this, it will only snow on the woman, which is usually what I don't want. But the interesting thing I can do when it comes to using this is I'm going to use this, this effect. We'll stop it again. I'm going to click on this effect, the second one over again, and I'm going to do Invert Mask. Watch what happens when we play it this way. Now it will only snow behind her. So if you want the snow in the background in general, that's what you can do. Now you can make your own mask. You can't make one that's totally customized pixel by pixel, but you could use the square or the circle. For example, if I wanted to use the square, I'll use that. I'll click on modify. And here's where I can adjust my mask. If I only want this area here, I'll click on OK and I'll make it inverted again and I'll get basically the same thing we saw before. Now it will come down on the left and right side of her, but it's not quite as cool as this one. You can also modify it by changing the feathering. Uh, you can move it around. I can change it so that the mask in this case would come down maybe this far or I could use a circle mask. All in all, when it comes to a person, I prefer using the second one to the left. If you turn this off, there is no masking whatsoever. Those are some of the simple ways in which you can modify this effect for snow. Now we're going to look at using a different tool. Let's close the window out, please. Now I'm going to turn this effect off simply by clicking on it and clicking on the garbage can. And now I want to use a different tool. We're going to use an overlay. Let me show you how to change an overlay. We have an overlay of snow, and if I want to customize that, I need to find it. I can drag and drop or use the search. I simply am going to use one called Snowflake. Here's my snowflakes. I'll take and I'll drag it down to a video track, which is where your particles go. And we'll stretch it out a bit to make it a little longer. Let's say I'm using this and I'm not sure if I really like it the way it starts out. When I play this, this is what I'll see. Now in this case, the big flakes are a little too big for me. And so what I'd like to do is change that. So to edit it, I double click on it and that will get me into the edit mode. 
The screen starts out this size. I'm going to make mine full screen. And we have two options when it comes to editing a particle. You can edit it in express mode. Now express mode is nice. It has all these simple controls you can, you can modify in terms of parameters. And the warning is it will apply to all the particles. So that's something I don't want to do is just modify all of them the same way. If I'm in a hurry, I might take that approach. But if I'm not, I want to go to the advanced mode. Let's go to the advanced mode. When we're in the advanced mode, we get to see a lot more about how many particles I have. In this case, I have five of them. And whichever track I'm clicked on will show me the particle and information about it. So let me give myself a little less room here on my particles. And what I also want to do is minimize my image. This is the origin of the particle and the way it comes down. Now, if I want to examine these one by one, the easiest way to do that is right click on the left side and do enable selected track. Now I'm only seeing particle number four. And if I play this, this is what particle four is doing. I'll stop it here. Now I can take particle four and I can move it over here and it's going to come down differently. I could actually take it here and I can rotate it. And now I'm going to have a sideways particles that will come in. If I play it now, now I have a different look. It's coming in from the left side. So you can move these around one by one if you like to do that. To see them all again, you just right click on the track. Once you stop, you stop it, you right click, you do enable all tracks. Now I'm looking for the particle that where the snowflakes are too big. I can either remove it or I can change it. So let's go to particle five. I'll do right click, enable selected track only. I think that may be the one with the big ones. Yes, here's a big one right here. So I want to change that one. So I'm going to stop and I want to edit it. So I'm going to go to the properties here. And these parameters are pretty complicated. But the basic ones I look at to make it simple are the size and the speed. So the size here right now is 2.091. I find it best not to use the slider. Let's make the size 0.9. Okay, and then we have a size variation. Right now they can go up to 500. Let's make the variation less, like let's make the variation 150. And let's see what happens when we play this track only. Much more reduced. So maybe the size is too small. Maybe I want to change it and make it instead of 150. Maybe 200 is better. And maybe I can increase my size to 1.1. There's all kinds of variations you can do. Let's try this one and see. It'll be slightly different. A little bigger. I don't want them too large. I want to make my size consistently. I'll turn my variation simply down to 100. When I change it to 100, there basically isn't any significant variation on size. So I like that one better. So I've just changed that singular particle. I can do that on any track I want. Let's stop this and just click on another one to see what, how that one works. That one's coming in over here. Let's click this one. This one is coming in over here. This one is coming in here. And again, I can move it around and change the parameters all I want. You can add particles as well. There's an option simply to add a particle. And if you want to see where the particle is, you hover over the image and it gives you the path to that particle. To add a particle, you click on the plus and then you go to your file system and find the location where you want that particle to be. But the one that is existing on that particular particle track is shown there. If I change the particle track, you see I have a change in the particle. Now if I want to add a completely new particle track, I click on the image in the upper left corner, add new particle effect, and then I navigate to the place where the particle is I want to use. I'm going to use Snow 6, and then click on Open, and now I have a new track. And here it starts in the middle, which is what I don't want, and I want to widen this out a bit. 
And so we'll just spread the yellow bars wider. And I'll go over here and we'll rotate it. And now I have an additional particle. So if I right click and do enable all tracks again, I'm going to have my additional snow particle. When you're done, you can do a save as and you can give it a new name. I'm going to call this bigger snow and click on OK. Now I'm going to shrink that down and then we'll close the window. I'll click on OK. And here now I have my bigger snow particle. And that's the one I'm using to create a snow effect customized to my taste in CyberLink PowerDirector.